Even in the age of Concord and moon buggies and microprocessors, I defy anyone to be unmoved by the fourth railway bridge. It was built at the end of the last century. And if you want to make one for yourself, the recipe is 54,160 tonnes of steel, 740,000 tonnes of granite, 48,400 cubic yards of stone, 64,300 cubic yards of concrete, 21,000 tonnes of cement and 6.5 million rivets. And all this was built in an age when the only alternative to railways was a horse and trap. It's only when you're over the fourth bridge that Scotland really seems to begin. We're on the Highland Line now, which goes up through Perth and beyond. And though it goes over the highest summits and the bleakest moors on British Rail, 100 miles of it were built in less than two years. Victorian energy and railway navvies. Inverness. I'm 180 miles north of Edinburgh now, 700 miles by rail and taxi since I left London. And I still haven't seen the word Kyle, of, or Lochalsh on a railway timetable. But Inverness is the last change, so I might be in luck. Ah, there we are. Hmm. Oh. Four hours to kill. I'm afraid I'm one of those travellers who gets rather twitchy about leaving stations when I know there's a connection in the offing. But four hours is four hours, and I think it's probably good for a railway filiac like myself to occasionally tear himself away from trains, do a bit of sightseeing, buy a souvenir of old Inverness, and generally see what normal people do around here. Which is what brought me to my first Highland Games. I always thought they were huge affairs, but this one's quite cosy, really. It's a local occasion, very friendly, but they do seem to have 20 or 30 events going on simultaneously, which looks a bit dangerous. I don't know how many Highland dancers get killed by flying hammers in a year, or tug-of-war teams decimated by shot putters, or spectators squashed by freshly tossed cabers. The railway to the Kyle of Lochalsh. In summer, a converted 1897 restaurant car serves as an observation coach. On the right-hand side, we have the Black Isle. Here, devotees of fine landscape can see and, courtesy of a special British Rail guide, hear about the passing delights. cars as luxurious as this in, in, in the States. I've never ridden on a train in the States. You've never ever been on a train in the States? Jean McKenzie, on the other hand, has been travelling this line since the year it opened, 1897. I went to help to my ferry boat to a big, one of McBain's big boat, and took me to Stroh, and then I went on to Inverness and Glasgow. Oh, and, and this, when, when was that? How many years ago? Oh, that was when I was 14. How old are you now? Oh, then. Yes. I'm only 99. Only 99? Only. Oh, <laughs> a slip of a girl. <laughs> oh.
They call this the skyline, and it runs through some of the most gloomily beautiful country in the world. A country which looks and sounds as if it's out of Tolkien, with names like the Valley of Drizzle and Raven Rock and the Black Water. The locks and lonely crags and empty moors it passes through are thick with legends of giants and beasts, and one particularly fearsome witch known in the trade as Hairy Agnes. Honestly, says so in a British Rail brochure. The last ten miles to the Kyle, which looks so deceptively idyllic, it took four years to blast out of solid rock. There are a few lines in the whole of Britain which were as hard won as these. Then quite suddenly we're at the end of the line, the end of the journey. In three hours and ten minutes we've crossed Scotland from the North Sea to the Atlantic. Along the station dozens of backpacks rise into the air like a medieval army preparing for battle. This is, believe it or not, Kyle of Localche. And there, 785 and a half railway miles from Euston, is the Isle of Skye. And now, I think I deserve to buy myself a drink. I suppose there can't be that many people who come to such a beautiful and remote corner of northwest Scotland just to keep a business appointment, especially on a four-day train journey. But there are priceless objects in the Kyle of Localche which you can't get anywhere else. Now then, where was it? Past the post office, telephone box on the right, and there we are. Uh, Michael Palin from London. Oh, right. pleased yeah. to meet you, Mr. You Palin. Note, you? Yes, yes, right. sure, it all arrived okay. Have you, uh, have you got it ready for me? Yes, you? I've got it all ready for you. I don't know quite whether you realise how big it is, though. Oh, it doesn't matter how big it is, you know, as long as it's there. Oh, great moment, this. There we are. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's big, isn't it? It is a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> it's in the bedroom wall, but it's great. So, uh, ferry from Kyle to Sky. So, uh, bus across Sky yeah. to Armadale. Uh -huh. Ferry Armadale to Malag. That's it. Pick up the train at Malag for Glasgow. That's it. You got okay, it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks very much indeed. Okay Pick then. Up. Right. That's fine. Thank you. Bye bye. Kyle of Localche, my very own station sign. You see, train spotting is all about collecting, whether it's numbers or southern region buttons or the sounds of flying Scotsmen. It's wanting to have a part of something which is, for better or worse, in your blood. I've discovered on this journey that my love affair with railways never really did end, and I don't suppose it ever will.